hello everyone welcome back listen today we are talking about something that i have not ha stopped having people request me talk about and i don't think you're gonna like my viewpoint on this to be honest with you um i think you're gonna expect me to say a particular thing and i'm not going to say that this is a whole situation with content creator michaela naguera and a small business called impressions impressions bronze illusion bronze, illusion bronze sorry so this like self tan company is a really really cool idea i really really like the concept and actually if i'm ever looking for a self tanner in future this would be the one i would go for it takes into consideration your hair color your eye color something else and something else <laughs> which I can't remember. But key factors within color theory that play a part when it comes to your tan and how natural it looks. So it's a really, really incredible idea. Briefly, very briefly before we watch all the content, the person who owns this, Matthew, is saying that Michaela cost him $10,000 um, because he basically purchased all this product because Michaela said she was going to review the product on social media. And because of her fame on TikTok and the her ability to sell out products. He got a loan for $10,000 and purchased product in preparation for Michaela's post now. Before we get into this video, sorry for a terrible voiceover. I'm just editing, but I just want to make sure everyone knows why I'm making this video, right? I'm not making it for the drama aspects. I like making videos that look at brands and um their history and perhaps some problems so people can make an informed decision whether or not they want to purchase from them right so this video is about one the brand the illusion bronze and then secondly i also wanted to put forward how quickly people assume that the influencer is on the wrong side of something because they're big because they're famous because they're rich Taking into consideration the negatives of a brand, but also looking at the positives, even if you're not a fan of a brand, goes the same for influencers, right? There are some influencers out there who are terrible and do terrible things, but there's also some things that those people do that are right. So when we're looking at situations like this that really aren't that deep, just don't go hating an influencer just because they are an influencer, just because they've done something, not just because they've done some things that are untrustworthy, maybe they have done some things that are untrustworthy, but also educate yourself and give yourselves the facts on the situation before you make an informed choice for yourself. That's what I'm trying to say. Not sticking up for all influencers, being like, they never do any wrong, because they absolutely do. But it's also important to make sure that you are on the right side of any information or any situation here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna watch the things in order the tiktoks in order we have him um, explaining the situation michaela's response to his his tiktoks and then a response from him i do have to add as well i wasn't going to talk about this although i am quite opinionated on this i just wasn't going to talk about it um audra reigns has an incredible incredible live stream on this situation and they bring up so many things that you may not even think of when it comes to this situation so i would go ahead and recommend watching their live stream i'll leave it linked down below and do subscribe to their channel also if you like this kind of commentary style video Okay, let's get into it. Subscribe. Eyes have cost me $10,000. Yes, I am $10,000 in debt because of her lies. In October, I made a video asking Michaela if there was any way she would review my small business. My business Illusion Bronze went viral last year and in the video to Michaela, I just explained, hey, there's this multi-million dollar company who's sort of knocking off my idea and I could really use your help. I launched in January. This multi-million dollar brand had a line of four shades coming coming out in April. After seeing I had gone viral with my concept, this brand put a quiz on their website asking people for their eye color, hair color, and skin tone, and they would suggest one of four colors. So it basically cheapened and simplified my idea, obviously, because I have 125 customizable colors. I tried to convince myself that it was a coincidence, but there were a few girls who went viral from reviewing my product that were genuine, authentic reviews. Okay, so quick, quick roundup, right? He doesn't know Michaela um, at this point of him asking, I don't I don't believe, asking her to try the product. He's a small business reaching out to a big influence saying, 
influencer, sorry, saying, you know, it'll be amazing if you could try my product, would you please do this? And other small influencers and content creators have used his product and got really good views on their own content. A tan brand, I believe it was Bondi Sands, I can't remember, I'll correct it if, if I'm wrong, bought out these self tans that I think there were four of them. One had a blue lid, one had a green lid, and I think it was something else, but it was for different skin tones, right? So they took his concept in the terms of, they didn't change the product, they just did a quiz online, almost like that Ill Maquillage Foundation, where you take the quiz and then they match you to a perfect um, foundation. Now they only have four shades. So what Matthew is saying here is that he has over a hundred shades. So they took that concept, but cheapened it in the fact where it's like, it's not actually that customizable. Um, it's kind of like taking the quiz of like, what sex in the city girl are you? You know, there's only four to choose from. Wait, yeah. This multi-million dollar brand went after them, paying them to do reviews of their brand and mention the things that were unique about my product, but instead say it about theirs. So imagine my surprise when four days after I asked Michaela if she would review my small business, she reviews the specific line from the multi-million dollar company who was knocking me off. Now keep in mind, when I asked her to review my product line and then she reviewed the competitor four days later, their line had been out for six months at this time. So I didn't believe it to be a coincidence. It's not that I was blaming her. I didn't think it was her fault. But I thought, wow, this company has already gone after the small influencers who blew up my brand and paid them. They must have seen my video to Michaela and now paid her too. I do believe that big brands do do this, like they would copy a smaller brand, and um, especially with this concept, because it's quite unique. I personally haven't seen a self-tanner or anything like that, like this detailed. Other things, yes, like lipstick color, foundation, hair color, whatever, but this is, this is a very unique, unique product so far. So he's saying that he made a video tagging Michaela. Michaela didn't see it, which I don't believe she would have seen it because um, she probably gets tagged and comments hundreds and hundreds of times throughout the day. But he's saying perhaps the tan brand saw it and now they are thinking like, oh, we don't want Michaela to try this. Let's get her first with a payment, right? This video I posted wondering if it was a coincidence garnered 4 million views. Kayla DM'd me the next morning and said it was an absolute coincidence. It would never be my intention to hurt a small business. She said, I think I actually have your tanner. Regardless, when I get home, I will make my purchase and try your tanner ASAP. We DM back and forth for a while. She does say, I wish you would have come to me first. I was like, uh, how? So then she gave me her phone number, asked to speak on the phone. Listen, for, an, for a content creator, or even a complete stranger to give you their personal phone number, I don't care who you are, is a big deal. That's a very personal thing to do, you know? It's a direct link to you. Sometimes you can find out people's addresses with it. They do it on Catfish all the time. You can, you know, contact people on WhatsApp with it. You can see what accounts your phone number is registered to. It's such a personal thing to do. I, that, and that gives me this kind of for in my mind that Michaela was serious about the situation, okay? Talked for like 20 minutes. She was like, my parents are small business owners. They've experienced similar things. Like, wow, this poor girl, like she's young. She's doing the best she can. Once she's home, she shows me. Just really quickly, who does this guy sound like? He sounds exactly like someone and I can't for the life of me figure out. It's, it's someone on TV, a cartoon character or something that she has the product, as well as shits all over my competitor, but I'm not gonna blast that. And for a second, I really thought like, wow, maybe this misunderstanding is turning into a friendship. Well, in October, she told me she was posting it ASAP, and then two months passed by. I really just had grieved the idea and moved forward. I was like, damn, it's unfortunate that she really is the person that people say she is. Okay, remember that. She really is a person that people say she is. So he has gone in to this, like, relying on Michaela to post this content for free. It's a big, to her millions and millions and millions of people, her millions of audience <laughs> followers, knowing that there are people out there who say she isn't a good person or a reliable person. He knows this going into that, that that is what people say. Okay. I don't think that she understands that 
just because I don't have 15 million followers, I do have almost 72,000. And people tag her in my videos and ask me about her every single day now for the past three months. So one day when someone was in my live asking me where Michaela's review was, I said, guys, just let it go. And then people started going to her page and commenting, where's the Illusion Bronze review? They texted me almost immediately. I don't know if you mentioned me or something somewhere, but I'm getting so many comments about trying the tanner and I'm actually using it this weekend. She says, I'll be posting a video about it tomorrow, December. Okay, so she says she'll be posting a video about it tomorrow. Bear in mind, he was expecting a post already months ago and it never happened. Can we trust that she would be doing this? I do just want to say something very, very quickly. From, a, from an influencer point of view, and I know a lot of people are going to be like, it's not hard, just review it. Here's what I want to say about this situation. One, Michaela isn't being paid for this review. And I only say that because a tan video can take a whole day. You have to talk about a product, right? Fine, easy. You have to apply the product. You have to let it set. You then have to wash it off. You then have to show it how it looks like. Sometimes, not this brand, but other brands, you have to wear it overnight. That is a whole day of content you are expecting from somebody without being paid. This is our jobs. This is an influencer's job is to create content. If you're gonna take up a whole day of their content, they might not even be able to apply makeup on it or wear nice clothes over it because of staining. If you're gonna ask someone to create a whole day of content, you better be paying a little bit. You know what I mean? Because that is a long time. Or not be pushy, not expect things. I have PR that I have been given for free months ago, months and months and months. It is sitting on a shelf right there. I have this whole shelf that is to use, things to use, things that have been sent, things that I'm very grateful that I have been sent to create content from that I want to get around to using because I want to say thank you to the brand for sending it to me. I don't have to be nice about it, but it, it's, you know, a nice thing to do. There have been other brands that said, you know, oh, oh have you got it? Do you, have you tried it? I'm like, yeah, I've tried it. I loved it. No content is out about it because maybe I didn't like the content I made and now I have to find time to redo it again. Being an influencer isn't a difficult job. However, it takes up a lot of time. It, ta it I work six to seven days a week sometimes. And sometimes I don't have time to try something. Or I don't have time to do something. You can probably find time to test an eyeshadow palette, a lip gloss, a lipstick, a foundation, a tan, however, a whole day situation. Now in the past, Michaela made a video about how she doesn't review indie brands anymore because they can't keep up with the orders. There's been a few instances where the indie brand cannot handle the, the capacity to fulfill all of those orders. I was a long-term fan and follower, so I remembered that video, and the last thing that I wanted to do was embarrass myself, my business, or her. And Shopify had kept offering me a $10,000 loan. So when she told me, I'm reviewing this tomorrow, I was like, let me- Like she had done a few months ago. Let me take that loan. The money gets deposited within like 24 hours, and I spent all $10,000 on product. Okay, I just want you to bear in mind this timeline. She said, I'm reviewing this product tomorrow. The same day he takes that loan, has to wait 24 hours for it to clear, and then spends it on product, okay? I honestly felt like that day was Christmas. I was so excited. I kept refreshing my TikTok feed. And when she finally posted, she clearly had a tan on but it was hideous. Talking like beyond orange. That's kind of harsh. <laughs> beyond orange. And the hands were a mess. I genuinely didn't understand with how my product line works, how she could turn out looking like that. Still, I tried to find the least offensive photo of this tan I could find and texted her, you look beautiful. Here is my message below. I say I wish I could have given her tips and talked to her more about how long to leave it on for. When she and I were on the phone, Michaela wanted to make sure that my tan was a rapid tan, which it is. You leave it on one hour for light, two hours for medium, three hours for dark. She told me she doesn't like using tans that you leave on for a long time. But she told me she left on mine for 12 hours, so I'm like, is that why it turned out so bad? Still, she tells me she loves it. If you're unaware of this, Michaela usually posts in chronological order, so I'm like, if this is my tan, 
Why didn't she post a review video? She said she was... Maybe because she didn't like the way it turned out and wants to try it again. This is like what I said earlier. Sometimes I've used a product and I haven't liked it. And I then I'm like, you know what? That's a me problem. The way I used it is incorrect. I know it can be used better. That's why sometimes I do second chance videos, right? But also sometimes that content doesn't even make it onto any of my socials. I will use, I will use a product. It will look shit because it's like I've done. So I don't post it because I know that's not what the product should look like. And I'll post it again when I know I've used it correctly. You know what I mean? I'm not going to apply a product and, and not like it and be like, wow, look how great this is. You know? She was posting it today. Called my mom so upset. I'm like, and also he said it looks shit. So, you know, I'm like, mom, when she posts this video, no one is going to want to buy myself Tanner. Like, how did it turn out this way? And then my mom said, Matt, with all the orders you've had, has anybody ever told you they look orange? Have you ever seen a photo of someone who looks orange after using Illusion Bronze? And I was like, no. And then I went back and I looked at her full body and I realized she got a spray tan. Not only did she lie when she said she was posting a review the next day, but she lied to me pretending she even used it at all. Like, why not just say I didn't get a chance to use it? Why are you saying I slept in it and I love it? Just say you didn't have time. So for the next three weeks, I'm stewing. I'm like, where's the review? $10,000 worth of product showed up at my house. Finally, I'm like, listen, she doesn't know how much money I spent. So let me just tell her the situation. None of her business. Her the situation and that it's stressing me out and I know she'll make it right. Pause if you want to read, but basically I tell her three weeks earlier, I placed an order for $10,000. Okay, let's take a look at this. So I don't want to sound like a pest or pile on when you're not feeling great. I was never planning on following up about review at all because like I've said, you don't owe me anything, correct? But when you texted me three weeks ago saying you were doing it the next day, I placed a 10,000 order with my lab, bigger than I've ever done before because I wanted to be prepared. That's quite a thing to put on someone. So that's made me a little stressed. I'm super sensitive and understanding when it comes to your mental health. That should be your number one priority always. But if you do manage to master up, muster up the energy for New Year's Eve tan or sometime soon, I would be super grateful. Dollars because I wanted to be prepared. And as someone who talks about their mental health so much, I wanted to let her know that I was really stressed out about this. And if she could find the energy to do a New Year's Eve tan, I would really appreciate it. Oh my God, well, the good news is you'll have the stock when the video is posted. She told me she didn't have time to make a review when she originally used the product, even though I now know she didn't use the product at all. Well, she did find the time to do a New Year's Eve tan. Now I'm gonna do my base. I am gonna match myself tan. But for some reason, she chose not to review mine in that moment, even. Maybe because she didn't like the tan, she did. <laughs> Knowing there was $10,000 worth of product sitting in my home. Now it's the second week of January, two weeks since I've told her about this and she's gotten another spray tan. So she said she was posting it ASAP in October. The first week of December, she said I'm posting the review tomorrow. Two weeks ago, I told her because she said that I ordered $10,000 worth of product and she's had two tans since then and not once did it cross her mind, hey, I really should post that review. This guy has all this product sitting in his house. Not her problem. Sorry, but it's absolutely not. She did not tell you to take out $10,000 worth of loan money to spend on product. Also, where is it in your house? Can we see? I, I think that is such a huge thing to put on someone. Imagine someone just coming up to you one day and being like, hey, um, I'm, I've got out a loan, but you said you'll help me pay it back, right? But, oh, yeah, but it's $10,000. You, you'll help me pay that back. It's that kind of energy. It's like, you can't get out a loan without asking someone and expect them to help you get them back by posting content. If you think you are going to sell $10,000 worth of product for this, and you're expecting somebody to post about it to make you that money for free... That doesn't sit right with me. Because of what I said to him. She doesn't care about me, my mental health, my finances, my stress, but she expects everyone else to care about her mental health. You're not the only one, babe. You're not the only one. Low blow. Really low blow. People do care about Michaela's mental health. Here's why. She has an audience that literally ask her how her mental health is. I've seen some of her posts where she's replying to people asking how she is. She has an audience of supporters that 
again, support her, fact, and ask how her mental health is. Just because you took out a loan for $10,000 doesn't mean she then needs to add that to her stress. Take on your stress or anything like that. I hate to be really harsh, but that was a really poor business decision. And if anyone did that to me, I would be livid. I would be so angry that you are blaming me for your mental health situation because you decided to take out a loan that I never said you should get. I'm telling you guys this now because last night people were commenting on her videos saying, I support Matthew's small business, review Illusion Bronze. She responded, no, she responded, shut up. And she started blocking people. I've got 10K worth of product in my home. So Maybe it's not the best way to deal with it. You should just ignore it, but in my home so if you'd like to start out your new year with the only custom tan please visit illusion bronze and if you're not somebody who uses self tanner or can't afford it please follow me that's the biggest thing that you can do to help i want to make sure that i am doing what i can to highlight small businesses this year for no compensation we need to be helping each other in 2024 no one owes you help I think that's really self-entitled. I think it's great for influencers to help smaller brands, indie brands and stuff like that. But as Michaela said, when somebody of her, you know, um, position shares it, the brand can potentially actually not do so well and go out of business, be overwhelmed with orders. It's, it's not always a good thing. The energy I'm getting from this guy is very, very like, I have a small business and you should help me. It's very entitled. Let's have a look at um, Michaela's response. I really like Matthew. Matthew's a really nice guy. I've had good conversations with him, but I find it really unfortunate that he decided to take this issue to TikTok and fabricate a lie in order to prove a point. Am I entirely wrong that I didn't review the Tana when I said I would? Yes. Did I mention to him that I didn't get to it? Yes, but still, nonetheless, I should have reviewed the Tana sooner. But to fabricate a lie that, that when, when I told him I used his tan, he, he says I lied to him and used a spray tan. tan. I've, I've never, never gotten a spray tan, tan in my life. life. I, I'd, I'd like, like to breathe with, with that. that. Second of all, the reason that the tan appeared orange is the same reason I look kind of like really warm and orange right now. The video has color grading on it. So if I take the color grading off of my video let me show you what i look like and this was just in a video of me showing my outfit so if i did a video using the tana it wouldn't have color grading on it but it was just a random video so let me take the color grading off and show you what i actually look like this is with the color grading off totally different and yes i have this tana on and i'm not orange it doesn't look orange it looks bronze it looks great at all and I've never gotten a spray tan, and I didn't lie. Again, I am completely in the wrong because I should not have told Matthew, oh, I'll do it tomorrow, when I when tomorrow came and I couldn't do it. And I did tell him. I did tell him I wasn't able to get to it because I was in a rush. But I was going to get to it. I always get to it. It just sometimes takes a bit. Anyways, he messages me again. I believe that. I 100% believe that. As I said earlier, there are products that I want to use that I was sent months ago. Still haven't got round to it. Around, you know, New Year's and lets me know that he had purchased 10,000 units or $10,000 worth of Tana, which I did not advise him to do that. That is a business decision that he made. The fact of the matter is I didn't get to it yet. That's it. I, if you look at my track record of Tana videos, the, t making a Tana video is different than me sitting at my beauty desk. I do them like once or twice a year. And I don't tan often at all. Last year, I tanned maybe three, four times. So I know that like four months has gone by since I said I would do the review, but I just don't tan a lot and I don't make tanning videos a lot. He cannot rely on me for the success of his brand. He just can't. I just, I don't know what to do in this situation, but I am sorry. Fair. I think 100% fair. I also want to say something as well. Listen, I know people like to hate on influencers and especially influencers with big followings. And sometimes in these influencers do really incorrect things, right? However, I, I think of myself as fair and I think of myself as a good, a good thinking mind when it comes to thinking about things. So that's how I'm viewing this situation. I'm viewing it as a business, as, as somebody, you know, who may own a business and from an influencer standpoint, 
that's how I'm judging this situation. So she she basically said, I just didn't get around to it, but I would. Should I have said that I was going to do it and give an exact date? No. She And she's right. She should have just said, I'll get to it at some point, but I'm really, really busy. I know you understand. I'll let you know when, when it's done. Here's something... Okay, I have a few things I want to say at the end of this. Let's see his response to her response. Michaela just posted a response to my TikTok. I want to be very clear about why I made the decision to post that video. The day before yesterday, my followers were commenting on one of Michaela's videos about her reviewing Illusion Bronze. And Michaela made the decision to respond to them and say things like no and shut up and proceeded to block a lot of people that are following me. That really triggered me because two weeks ago was when I told Michaela that I had spent $10,000 on product. No, Michaela did not tell me to spend $10,000 on product, but her knowing that I had just spent all that money on product, why is she responding to people in her comment section saying things like no and shut up and blocking them? So Michaela, that is why I posted that video. I really like Matthew. Matthew's a really nice guy. I've had good conversations with him. But I find it really unfortunate that he decided to take this issue to TikTok and fabricate a lie in order to prove a point. Am I entirely wrong that I didn't review the Tana when I said I would? Yes. Did I mention to him that I didn't get to it? Yes. But still, nonetheless, I should have reviewed the Tana sooner. But to fabricate a lie that when I told him I used his Tana, he says I lied to him and used a spray tan. I've never gotten spray tan in my life. I, I'd like to brief with that. If Michaela is saying that she didn't get a spray tan, I'm not gonna double down. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, and I apologize for that. See, I've been airbrush tanning people for half of my life. And there's something called either a heavy hand or a light hand when you're airbrushing. And when somebody has a heavy hand, it's usually a bad spray tan or somebody inexperienced. They'll start out on one part of the arm, the higher part light, and then it gets really heavy as they pull down. And as somebody who's spray tanned a lot of people, that's what it appeared like to me. But... So he's saying that this kind of like almost t-shirt mark line comes from spraying, starting here, bringing down, starting here, bringing down. You can do that with fake tan also. I've done it with fake tan. I had a mitt, fake tanning. To start up here, go down. Start up here, go down. I do it with body moisturizer. I always start at one point. That can be done with spray tan or fake tan or anything, body cream, anything like that. Like she said, that's not true. Second of all, the reason that the tan appeared orange is the same reason I look kind of like really warm and orangey right now. The video has color grading on it. So if I take the color grading off of my video. Let me show you what I look like. And this was just in a video of me showing my outfit. So if I did a video using the Tana, it wouldn't have color grading on it, but it was just a random video. So let me take the color grading off and show you what I actually look like. This is with the color grading off. Totally different. And yes, I have this orange. Tana on and I'm not orange at all. And I've never gotten a spray tan and I didn't lie. Again, I am completely in the wrong because I should not have told Matthew, oh, I'll do it tomorrow when I when tomorrow came and I couldn't do it. And I did tell him, I did tell him I wasn't able to get to it because I was in a rush, but I was going to get to it. I always get to it. It just sometimes takes a bit. I just want to clarify again, when she told me she was posting it tomorrow, she did not the next day tell me, oh, I'm so sorry. I was so busy. I didn't get to it. She didn't tell me that until three weeks later when I contacted her and said, hey, you said you were posting this the next day. I bought all this product. Then she said, oh, I'm sorry. I was too busy. I didn't get to it. Anyways, he messages me again around, you know, New Year's and lets me know that he had purchased 10,000 units or $10,000 worth of Tana, which I did not advise him to do that. That is a business decision that he made. Michaela did not advise me to do that and I 100% did that on my own and here is why. I used to review indie brands all the time. When I was making those indie brand review videos, you know, 90 to 100% of the time, the product would sell out. Um, there's been a few instances where the indie brand cannot handle the 
the capacity to fulfill all of those orders. There have been cases where I sold out a product and the brand got greedy and put the product back in stock, but it wasn't back in stock and people ordered it and then waited months to receive it because this indie brand was dishonest. I had to add to that and there have been some makeup brands that have, have actually done this. Um, and people have waited almost a year for their product. Had people buying a product that wasn't even in stock. Does that video explain to you guys at all when she texted me on her own, out of the blue, hey, I'm posting a review tomorrow that I would go and purchase a lot of product? Fact of the matter is, I didn't- Here's my question about that, right? And I wanna talk timeline. So we have two timelines. So if Michaela had said to you that she was going to post the video, right, the next day, that day you decide to order the $10,000 worth of product. What would be the difference if she actually made the post off the tan and the same day you ordered the $10,000 worth of product? What would be the difference between a few hours, a whole day, if, if the loan is processed that quickly within 24 hours it was said why did you not wait for that video to be posted because if they're offering you this loan and you you got you got it and it was processed very quickly why not wait for the video to be actually posted considering you know she had said she would post and she hasn't a few times before you before this post but it doesn't make sense to me that it doesn't it doesn't make sense that you couldn't just wait a, a day or a day extra for orders. You know what I mean? Brands we say all the time, we're inundated with orders, please please allow this amount of extra time for your order to arrive with you. Again, if that loan was processed so quickly that you ordered $10,000 worth of products already <laughs> within, what, 24 hours of her telling you that you're gonna order the products, what would the difference be for you to wait until the video was actually posted, then place that order and get that loan? because it was a pretty quick turnaround for the whole thing. That just didn't sit right with me. My thoughts on this situation are as, as followed, right? I know we like to hate on, not me, I know people like to hate on influencers. It's a thing, it's a, even a thing in the media. Someone could be a murderer, this actually happened, and it'll be like, influencer kills this person, and the person has like 100 followers. They just like to use a buzzword influencer because people automatically hate them. This isn't a stick up for an influencer situation, but I can stick up for the fact that I know where she's coming from in some terms of this. This was all a really poor dis business decision that he said, she cost me $10,000. Incorrect, incorrect. There was no contract, there was no nothing. Physically and literally incorrect. I'm sure it's sold out now because this got a lot of attention, which leads me on to something else. Three options here. Three things and opinions I've seen flying around. One, that this whole situation played out exactly how it is, exactly how they said it happened. Situation two that was mentioned is that this was actually a, a joint thing to kind of create some kind of buzz and drama around the product, therefore selling the product. Situation three, which I think might be actually a little bit more likely, is that he used, utilized the group of people that hate Michaela to sell his product. It's very well known that if you become, you know, a successful influencer, big influencer, there's also gonna be a whole side of people that actually hate you, you know what I mean? And would help support this business who Michaela allegedly cost loads of money. I'm sure there's a group of people out there that hate me that are waiting for some kind of issue to happen. You know what I mean? Fact, it just happens. In my opinion, this isn't Michaela's fault. In my opinion, it's not that much of a big deal. I think that guy made really poor business decisions and almost wasn't patient enough when it comes to um, ordering these products. I think to have a whole business, you have to make wiser decisions than that. A $10,000 loan is not, a, is not a small decision to make. If you can get that loan within 24 hours, and an order of product also within that 24 hours, as he is saying has happened, because he's saying, well, he has all this product, right? Why not wait for the video to be posted? That baffles my mind, that boggles my mind. Anyway, it's not that deep. Thank you so much for joining me. I'd love to know your opinions down below. Consider subscribing. And for more commentary and reaction videos, you can follow me on my reaction channel. I will see you very, very soon. Bye.